are your employees aware that they are unaware? Unaware of their unique selling points that make them stand out from the sea of sameness. So unaware that they often don't leverage their individual assets to the fullest. Every single person in your organization has a unique set of talents, skills, experience, expertise or competences that when tapped into can give them and your business a competitive edge over others. We expect them to apply these superpowers to their daily tasks and interactions. But are they even aware of their superpowers? Do they know what sets them apart from their competition and how they can use their unique points of differentiation to their fair advantage? Let's get this journey started with your values and beliefs. Your values and beliefs are the principles that you apply to your life every single day and therefore also at work. Those are core principles that are important and relevant to you. And it is easy to instantly go there into areas, for example, trust or being reliable or being professional because those are prestigious terms we would like to have in our life. However, what I really want you to do is to identify your non-negotiables. Meaning, what are the values and beliefs, the principles, if you don't apply them in your daily work, for example, when you interact with your colleagues or with your boss or with your team members or with customers or with vendors or with suppliers, if you don't apply them to your work, you are actually a little bit disappointed in yourself. And even worse, if you interact with somebody who does not apply those values and beliefs to their products or work results that they deliver to you, then you get really disappointed. It is these non-negotiables that we need to identify in order to describe your unique set of values. Now let's move on to your origin and story. Each of us has a history. Each of us comes from a certain place and has grown up in a certain environment that created the human being that we are nowadays. Now, you might think, why is this important for my work and for my unique selling proposition? Well, the reality is we like to connect with people and instantly relate to them if they share something personal. Secondly, it is important for you to not just to share your original story, but also bring it into some sort of context why that original story made you the human being and the professional that you are nowadays and how somebody you interact with could actually benefit from. So let's imagine you have grown up with 17 siblings. Well, that is unique and something you should share, but tell us why, because nowadays, for example, you might be great in conflict resolution, or you might be a great team worker, or it has impacted your organization skills. Or if you have traveled around the world as a child, or grow up on five different continents, then for example, that says something about your cultural awareness. So what I want you to write down with a few notes now is tell us about your origin and tell us about your story and how it impacts you nowadays as a professional in the workplace and how others can instantly understand that they can benefit from the learnings you have from this history. Natural gifts and talents, however, you were born with. It is something that is ingrained into your DNA from the very first day you entered this planet Earth. That's the reason why I want you to go back into your childhood. Think about something you have always been great as a child. Something where you feel it came naturally to you. Something where you see proof that you have been successful in it as a child already. And nowadays, when you look into your work environment and into, into the way you handle things, you might find proof too that this is actually something you have always been naturally gifted in. In fact, it comes so easy to you that very often you get frustrated if somebody else delivers you a, a product or a result or something that, is, that doesn't relate on your natural talent and gift. You get disappointed when you think, why is this so hard to you? 
because it's so easy to you. Your natural talents and gifts feel easy to you because you have them in you your entire life. But that doesn't mean that others in your organization or outside your organization have the same natural talents and gifts. That's why it's not easy to them. This might be one of the hardest questions I ask you today, I admit. <laughs> because now we are talking about your competition and how you dominate your competition. First of all, let's discuss who is your competitor. Yes, it would be easy to think internally it is somebody who has a job, for example, that you would like to have. But I want you to take the outside perspective. Who is your biggest competitor on the market? Who sells a similar product or service that you sell as that you would consider as your main competitor? Please write that name down. It might be the name of a professional who is in a similar area than you or another organization or a small company. And once you have identified that competitor, I want you to think of one more. And that will be the harder one. Who could be a future competitor? Well, you might think, I can't look into the future and I don't know who that competitor might be. But think a little bit around the corner. Let's take, for example, artificial intelligence. Could be a huge competition in your industry. What does it take over right now that you do at the moment to produce your results for your customers? So think about your current competitors, but also possibly about future competitors. And now here comes the most difficult question. What do you do different than your competitor? Well, you might think that's not different because we offer better customer service or we deliver faster than our competitors or we are cheaper. But wait, that doesn't mean that you are different. That means you might just be better. And I promise you, if I would walk over to your competitor and ask them, do you also deliver great customer service? Guess what, what they will say? Of course we do. And we do it even better than you. So. This method would bring you into a comparison trap where you constantly compare yourself with your competitors and you will always lose the comparison trap because even if you identify something right now where you compare yourself to your competitors and say, we offer something that is better, they will instantly try to catch up. So we need something where they can't catch up because only you and only you can offer that. Something that is different something that only you offer on the market and your competitor can't and will never be able to. Now, when you look at this sheet, aren't you excited? Right at the beginning, I ask you, what is unique about you? Some struggled to answer that question and some gave great responses, but still very common responses. And now when you look into your sheet, you will find 15, 15 unique selling points that only you have. And it is the combination of those 15 unique selling points that make you stand out from the crowd, from the sea of seniors that only you have to offer. And in the next step, we will draft a unique selling proposition. Self-awareness is one of the most crucial tools of emotional intelligence. It's an actionable skill that will help your employees know and understand themselves better. By taking them on an interactive journey of self-discovery, I help your audience to identify and leverage these unique traits so they and your organization can stand out from the rest. Look, once you are aware, you have a choice. A choice to stand out or blend in. A choice to think about how you show up at work and represent yourself and your organization a choice to apply your unique assets to improve your performance, a choice to use your superpowers to give you a competitive fear advantage. It's the power of choice that makes self-awareness and emotional intelligence so relevant in today's workplace.